So what if you don't have graph paper? Or what if the equations aren't easily graphed and you still want to find their intersection point? We have some other techniques which we call algebraic techniques, which means that they require algebra um, equation solving skills rather than graphing. And the algebraic technique that we're going to look at today is called substitution. I'm going to give you the steps. They're going to sound like gibberish. Just play along. And then as we go through the examples, they will make more sense, or at least they, they should. That's my hope. So the first thing you want to do with the substitution technique is to make one of your equations have a variable alone. It could be the x or it could be the y, but you want to get everything away from one of the variables. Okay, the second thing that you do is you take that expression and you plug it into the other equation. Then you take that equation and you solve it. And then the final step is to take your answer from number three and plug that in to get the other coordinate point. All right, so let's go through example one using these steps. Chances are, when you are using the substitution technique, you might not even need to do number one, step number one. And here's why. In the substitution technique, you probably already have a variable alone. Sometimes you don't. But you see in this equation right here, y equals 2x minus 4, the y is already by itself. That was step number one. Make one equation have a variable alone. Since this equation already has a variable alone, I don't need to do step one. Now I can just go to step two. I'm going to plug my expression into the other equation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this 2x minus 4 and plug it in where there's a y. Here's why I do that, no pun intended. If y is equal to 2x minus 4, then anywhere else in this question where I see a y that is standing for the value 2x minus 4. If I say y equals 2x minus 4, then everywhere I see a y must equal 2x minus 4. So I can take this y out of the other equation and substitute, that's where the name comes from, 2x minus 4. So here's what I write down. I'm going to write down 7x minus 2, and then I'm going to do times 2x minus 4 instead of y. Don't write y, write 2x minus 4, and then just finish the equation equals 5. Now this says 7x minus 2y equals 5. Now I go to step number three. Step number three says solve. This is straight back from seventh grade or September, whatever you want to do, and we distribute the two. So you have 7x minus 4x plus 8 equals 5. And now you combine like terms, you get 3x plus 8 equals 5. Um, I'm not going to show the inverse because I don't have a lot of room, but that is 3x equals negative 3, which means that the x value is negative 1. So if you think about what we did yesterday, or I'm sorry, well, whenever it was, the last lesson, our, we were trying to find the intersection point. So the intersection point has an x value of negative 1. Now I'm going to do step 4, which is plug my value to get the other number. So you can pick whichever equation looks friendlier for you. I think the first one looks friendlier to plug into. So I'm going to do y equals 2 times negative 1, because x is negative 1, minus 4. So I get y equals negative 2 minus 4, so that means that the y value of negative 6. So... If I were to graph these lines, they would intersect at the point negative 1, negative 6. Let's look at another one. In example 2, you look at your equations and neither of them have a variable by themselves, which kind of makes it really annoying. So what you have to do is you have to find one of the variables that looks easy to get by itself, and I'm going to then move everything away. 
So this first equation looks super complicated, so probably not that one. Then I go over here, and I have two options, and I'm going to tell you which one's easier. I could divide everything by 2, and that would get the x to be alone, or I could move this 5 to the left, and then the y would be alone. The thing that's going to be easier mathematically is to move the 5. Here's why. If you divide by 2, then you have y over 2 and 5 over 2, which is not an integer. So it makes it more complicated with the numbers. So you'll get more practice, and as you get more practice, you kind of figure out what is easier. But nothing is wrong. It's just a question of an easier technique versus a little more complicated. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that second equation. I'm going to subtract 5. And so I have 2x minus 5 equals y. Now I have a variable alone. So I can take 2x minus 5 and plug it in right here for y. Again, it doesn't matter which equation you use and which variable you get to be alone. All you just have to do is do your calculations correctly. So in the other equation, instead of y, I'm going to put 2x minus 5 because that's what y is equal to. So I'm going to write 2x plus 3 times 2x minus 5 equals negative 3. This equation still says 2x plus 3y equals negative 3, but instead of y, I put 2x minus 5 because that's what y was equal to. So now you just do your calculations, your equation techniques, and you get 2x plus 6x minus 15 equals negative 3. That gives me 8x minus 15 equals negative 3. So I add 15, and I get 8x equals 12. Well, that doesn't go in evenly. But when I reduce it, I get 1.5 or 3 halves. Now, this is a perfect example why you need this technique, because um, when we were graphing, we never had decimal intersections. It's really hard to estimate a decimal intersection. So we know that our x value is at 1.5. Now you take 1.5, you plug it into whichever equation looks easier, and solve for the other piece. So again, I think the second equation looks easier because this first one has a lot of coefficients, so I'm going to plug it into this one. So I'm going to rewrite the second equation to say 2 times 1.5 equals y plus 5. So that gives me 3 equals y plus 5. So then y is equal to negative 2. So these two equations intersect at the point 1.5 comma negative 2. All right, here's another one where they give us a word problem, and then they also give us this setup, because remember I told you we're still beginners at the word problems. So pause the video, underline what you think is important, and then we'll write the equations together. All right, they tell us that the number of turkey burgers, which I don't know, plus the number of veggie burgers, which I also don't know, equals the total number of burgers, which I do know. So the first equation that I'm going to write is um, x plus y, because they tell me to use those letters in the little boxes. Um, that's equal to 50, because that's the total number of burgers that I bought. Then they tell me in the next one that the, the that the cost per turkey burger, which I know is uh, 2, times x plus the cost per veggie burger, which I know is 1.50, times y. That is equal to 90 because that's the total cost. So I'm just going to write it a little simpler. 2x plus 1.5y equals 90. So now there's no graph paper around, and also I don't really want to go up to 90. So I'm going to use my algebraic technique, which is substitution. So in substitution, you have to get a variable by itself. Neither of the equations have a variable by themselves. But this first equation looks pretty friendly, because all I can do is like move one of the variables over to the other side. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this first equation and I'm going to um, move the y. Let's move the y. So if the equation is x plus y equals 50 and I move the y, then the equation now is x equals 50 minus y. So now what I do is I take that 50 minus y and plug it in right here for x in the other equation. So here's what I have. I have 2 times 50 minus y, because that's what x equals, plus 1.5y equals 90. So now I just solve it. Um, so we get that's 100 minus 2y plus 1.5y equals 90. Combine like terms, I get 100 minus 0.5 or 0.5y equals 90. Uh, then I subtract 100. Negative, don't forget to bring down the negative. Negative 0.5y is equal to negative 10. Let's keep going. Divide by negative 0.5. And I get y is equal, calculators out, or maybe you don't need it, it's positive 20. So you go back up to the story, and you have to now scroll to figure out what y equaled. So y was the number of veggie burgers you see right here in this box. So that means that I got 20 veggie burgers. Is that the question? Well, it says how many of each burger did you buy? So... I've got 20 veggie burgers, so we can write that at least. 20 veggie. Um, and the way you figure out the other one is you take one of your equations and you solve for the other variable. Now, you might not need to because if it says that the total number of burgers you bought is 50, you could probably do that in your head and say, well, that means you got 30 turkey burgers, um, or you can use one of the equations like we did to figure it out. It's up to you. So if, if there are 50 total burgers, then that means that there were 20 veggie, and then there must have been 30, uh, I don't know what they're called, turkey, yeah. All right, if you have any questions, write them down and ask me when you come to class.